Hello guys. This video will be a detailed guide on how to acquire and use efficiently the explosives to break into someone's home. But before that, I would like to announce that at the Discord, link in the description, if the channel reaches 600 subs and some of you join the server, there will be a giveaway hosted for the skin on the screen. So let's get started. For your information, this video will be separated into three fragments. That is, early game raids. This section will include the type of explosives you can find and craft in early game to quickly dispose of your future neighbors. Mid game raids. Now this section will show you how to obtain the resources needed to raid a group of someone who was harassing you while you were rooting for some guns, for some food and guns. Late game raids. Now this is the last part. Here I will mention supplies that can be used against a formidable foe that was not only harassing you but the entire server, so make sure you watch closely. As I said previously, we will now look into obtaining the supplies to craft your first bombs. That is the homemade charge, a very makeshift explosive that isn't really reliable, but you can still blow something up with it. Now let's see how well the charge will do against some wooden structures. As you can see, the charge did one third of the doll's HP. The item description says that the charge deals 105 damage, but since it's not directly attached to the surface that is going to blow up, it's closer to 100. The next item on the list are the Zola's fragmentation rounds. They can be crafted, but we need to look for the magazine at military locations. They are very good to destroy wooden structures and also to finish off damaged crates, or even destroy them entirely. The honorable mention is the low launcher. While it's not really good at raiding, it can take down most of the vehicles. Here in this scenario, where there is uh, one uh, metal door and the surrounding structures are wood. The best choice of action is actually to bridge for the wood because the door is stronger. Therefore you will get quicker to loot and uh, much more cheaper bridging through the wood. I will also show you the HP of the door. 700 compared to the 400 of the wooden structures. So uh, that's a steal in my book. Then an honorable mention is uh, the glass wall and the glass structures in general. They have 900 HP, therefore they are a bit stronger than uh, brick uh, coming right here. Brick has only 800 HP, therefore it would be cheaper to bridge through the door. This part will be a bit more advanced since we will be since we will be looking into some explosives that will not only be capable of blowing a brick wall in one go, but also some ways to save on supplies needed to raid a base. So let's get started. First thing you need to remember before anything else is the detonator. Because if you don't have it, you wouldn't be able to detonate the bombs. The only exception is the breaching charge, but uh, I will now focus on the detonator and how to craft it. To craft it, you need one stack of electronics, four copper wires and one stack of plastic. And also a toolbox as a tool. It won't get used uh, in the crafting. So after you get this detonator, you can blow up the demolition charge and the cobalt charge will be shown later. Now the breaching charge, the only difference from it uh, between this and the demolition charge is that uh, the breaching charge doesn't need to have a detonator, uh, as I said previously. And uh, this how we craft it. It's uh, the one demolition charge, two electronics and uh, one gum tape, also the rewire kit. Uh, so after I take it, let me just uh, get it right now. As you can see, it has 850 structure damage and uh, two second fuse time. So what you do with it, it works like a sticky grenade in vanilla game. So let me just uh, throw it at the back of this wall. It sticks to the wall right here and uh, it damages a lot of it. It uh, pretty much two shots the uh, metal and then you can just finish it off with the AMR. 
do that I will mention later. But uh, in case you don't really want to uh, still craft uh, the detonator and yet you want to have uh, a reliable tool that you can uh, fire from a distance and uh, blow up the metal walls of your enemies or their entire base, you can uh, look forward to the RPG uh, to craft it. You need um, one RPG barrel, one RPG breach, one RPG scope, one RPG trigger assembly and uh, illegal gun parts and also a toolbox. After crafting the RPG you will get a uh, secret achievement and uh, to fire the RPG you actually need to craft the warhead for it first. Uh, you craft it with seven explosive compounds and uh, three stacks of gunpowder, also two metal bars and one blasting cap and uh, also a rewire kit. So this, this, this deals a bit uh, less structure damage than the charges than the charges and uh, yeah I will show you uh, about how the best way to so you have like the three lines here 50 uh, 100 and 200 into the range but since it's so close uh, I can just fire it like this it goes pretty much in the straight line uh, yeah it damaged a lot of the uh, structures a bit again and then we have the demolition charge, the one and only, the C4 of Arid. So let's uh, take this. This is how you craft it. You need uh, seven explosive compounds, four plastic fragments, uh, four electronics, one blasting cap, and three copper wires, and a rewire kit. And uh, it was just like a, the vanilla charge. So uh, it got damaged by the other explosions. So. Let me just uh, blow it over here. I hope it won't destroy the door in one go. And it didn't. And uh, yeah, but it's also almost destroyed uh, at 3 HP. And uh, in this case, if you want to finish it off, you would either use explosive ammunition. If you're desperate enough, you would use a thermobody grenade. But uh, I would not really use it as a main raiding tool since uh, it's quite scarce uh, but yeah an AMR or the exploit ammo would be enough and uh, since the patch I yeah this deals uh, 60 structure damage right here uh, it's a decent gun and will also be coming handy uh, in the late game since uh, the size that you can store your items in are actually extremely overpowered now because uh, you cannot damage them with conventional explosives. You have to actually use the AMR or uh, other weapons that can uh, inflict damage straight onto the uh, barricade or a structure in this case. So let me just finish off the door and yeah, this is how we will breach uh, a base. And the metal structures have 200 H 2000 HP and uh, if they have a metal, wall metal door in the doorway uh, it's a rookie mistake, because uh, it pretty much has uh, one third of the structure's HP. Then let's move forward to the second base design. This one is a bit more secure, because this armored metal door, I will quickly show you the HP of it. It has uh, a nice 1600 health. And uh, yeah, it is much better, because it's only four fives of uh, the structure HP, so it's still much more efficient to breach through the door because it will save you a lot of explosives and uh, this is the last design uh, in this case a metal base a 2x2 two two with a, a iridium armor uh, adamantine armor door uh, at 3000 3, hp well it's a uh, quite dig up and uh, it's much more efficient to breach through the doorway or the wall or anywhere around here and uh, yeah uh, very nice Now, the exploit that will take the spotlight is the newly introduced Cobalt Charge. Uh, the Cobalt Charge is a extremely cracked tool to get rid of someone's property because it deals uh, 2300 damage. It's a lot, uh, pretty much three times as much as the normal Demolition Charge. The only downside to it is that uh, you need Cobalt for it. The only two ways of getting Cobalt that I am aware of is getting it from Point Lima behind the locked doors, uh, I made a tutorial for it. 
And the second way, it actually spawns in Fortnail in the warehouse. Uh, I only found out, found out about it recently, so uh, now you know. And uh, yeah, I will uh, show how it... Uh, oh yeah, this is also how we craft it, we need 8 cobalt crystals. Just uh, try to not die while carrying them. Uh, 2 blasting caps, 4 plastic fragments, 4 electronics, 1 copper coil and 1 rewire kit. So now I will get into the base, I will place it in the middle of the base and I will show you the impact of it on the surrounding walls. So let's get outside. I will detonate it. And uh, it doesn't have that much blast radius, but uh, as you can see, it is much as two flo one floor of uh, inner duration of uh, damage. Drop off, because it still damaged the pillars while it didn't damage the uh, walls. But it pretty much uh, can two-shot any adamantine structures. But since it's uh, not a very efficient strategy to use two Cobalt Charles and still have uh, 600 HP uh, left to spare on of the damage, I'd probably combine it with uh, two Demolition Charges, so it will be much more efficient in that case, since uh, 2300 and plus the another one, plus uh, 1700 from the two charges will be more than enough, or actually... Ex Literally, the amount that we need to deal to destroy the adamantine structures. And uh, then another worthy contender of the. How do you say? Recyclable supplies uh, is the MGL, since uh, when you load it with the HE nades, uh, I'll put a screenshot of how you craft them right here. Uh, when you get it, uh, it will have rubber nails in it, you find it at the keycard in Fortnel, keycard room at Fortnel, and uh, yeah, it deals, uh, the ammunition deals, uh, I believe, 60 damage. Uh, let me just double, yeah, 65 structure damage, therefore it can be used to either, you know, damage of, destroy some damage of structures, or just uh, breach bases in general. Oh, uh, yeah, wait a moment. Uh, let me just uh, load this bad boy up. And yeah, now it's loaded, so... As you can see, it works just fine. I hit this thing, it doesn't really, it really have that much of splash damage. So let's uh, damage this uh, fully all right wall. 2% uh, of an undermantine wall, that's uh, would be 4% on the... Uh, on the metal wall, and so on and so on. So... The next thing is the Sabot MG. Uh, while it may seem like a nice gun, the only downside to it is that uh, the recipe how to craft the Sabot box will be shown on the screen right now. Uh, it deals 19 structure damage, uh, 8 structure damage, I mean. So it's not as bad as. Uh, I mean, it is bad, but uh, you know, if you're desperate enough, you could uh, use it like that. This is a bit of damage, you know, not, not really much, but it could be used to potentially destroy the safes. Uh, then the last thing on the endgame stuff is the AW12. It can be found at Fortnell, from some zombies, and from rare loot spawns. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's an uh, auto shotgun, but because uh, there are no shotgun shells on Arid, they decided to uh, load it with uh, fragmentation ma ammunition. And yeah, it uh, really does uh, quite a work. Not only is the splash damage quite big, probably a direct will kill you in like two shots, or maybe even one. Uh, yeah, possibly one, probably two if you body shot. Uh, but yeah, it can also be used like that. And uh, next we'll move on to the crates. The metal crate has 150 HP. Therefore, um, the best choice you have is probably either using the fragmentation uh, ammunition combined with the homemade charges I mentioned before, or just uh, blowing it with AMRs if this is a single crate like this, or using the MGL in case if the case the crates are stacked like this on top of each other closely, you shoot one, all of them are damaged. Oh, besides this one, because it probably just stuck somewhere here and it didn't damage it. But yeah, you just have to aim in the middle, so roughly all of them will get uh, hit. 
and uh, you can also use this AA-12 to damage it a bit, yeah, very nice, very good. Then the uh, industrial metal crate, metal box, uh, the 600 HP, therefore uh, an RPG shot uh, would be sufficient to explode it, or you could just use uh, AMR if you're really desperate. Uh, that's an entire magazine for you, and if you're playing on a normal where the, the, the weapon will get damaged, that's uh, another problem, the problem that you have to take care of. And now the extremely overpowered saves, they are explosion proof. That means that, uh, let me just take, uh, let's say, yeah, the MGL. So now I will uh, shoot at this. And as you can see, it dealt absolutely no damage. Therefore, I have to use the AMR and uh, use this to damage the storage. So that's uh, quite self-explanatory. And then we move on to the adamantine safe. It's exactly the same thing from what I believe, but has uh, double the HP and uh, it's a bit more expensive to craft. So, uh, yeah, let me just show you. You have to actually pretty much also unload the entire magazine of the AMR to destroy it. So if you get a base or entire room out of it, no one will be able to uh, have a single blast to damage them all. So that's good for you, I guess. If you, you know, if you're the one, you know, getting raided. But if you're the one raiding, uh, yeah, not very uh, efficient on your supplies, I'd say. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, join the Discord for a chance to win the skin mentioned before. Bye and have a nice day. Memories fade